My story starts when I was 36 weeks pregnant. Out of the blue, I started getting really sick. Sick to the point where they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me and I was admitted to hospital. They ran test after test and they ended up finding what they hoped was a cyst on my left ovary. We ended up having to go in for emergency surgery when my daughter, it turned out, had the umbilical cord wrapped around her neck. They opened me up, took out my daughter, Edie, which was a very exciting moment, and then proceeded to take out what turned out to be a six pound tumor. The tumor was so big, it was bigger than my baby. I remember very clearly the moment we were told that it was ovarian cancer. I was in my doctor's office with my husband and my newborn daughter. At that moment, all I could think was that I'm supposed to be at home with my brand new baby and my son, enjoying this moment together as a family. And here I am in a doctor's office being told I have ovarian cancer. What cancer took for me was heartbreaking. There's no way around that. I didn't get to spend the first six months of my daughter's life with her. I was going through chemo and radiation and I was not able to breastfeed her and bond with her the way that I wanted to. And that was really hard. But I was able to also see the love and support that was around me in a way I'd never had before. My husband, I am forever indebted to and more deeply in love with now because he is the one who held our family together. My parents were incredible. They were there for us every single day. I was incredibly lucky. Not only was my ovarian cancer caught early, which almost never happens, I understand how lucky I was in that, but also I am the benefactor of research that was done here in BC. Research at BC Cancer has shown that with my subtype of cancer, it responds well to radiation. And because of that, my chance of survival, my lifelong expectations have improved because of research that took place at BC Cancer. Our long-term goal is by 2030 is to reduce death and suffering of, from these cancers by 50%. What we want to see is a steady stream of discoveries moving into the healthcare system and becoming standard of care. Because we can only impact the lives of all women if our research becomes everyday clinical practice. And by being embedded so deeply within the clinical team, this is possible. The funds donated actually make it happen. A lot of the projects that we have through OveCare are innovative and uh, difficult to fund um, otherwise because they've not been done before. And uh, we hope uh, through our partnerships with um, the community and uh, donors that we'll be able to decrease uh, the incidence of this uh, terrible cancer. What we need to buy for the women of BC and women globally doesn't exist yet. We need to build it. And what we need to build is a toolbox, a prevention toolbox, which will have elements in it which will prevent women from getting these cancers. And we have some elements in place, but we need to make sure those elements are used appropriate and measure their effectiveness and develop new elements and prevent the cancers which our existing pieces don't cover. Your support is essential. We have some really good things going on and we're no longer sort of a high-risk startup enterprise. We've proven we can make a difference locally, nationally and internationally, but we can't take it to the next step without help. The idea that right now at BC Cancer, research is going on to stop ovarian cancer before it even turns into cancer itself is incredible to me. If I could have had treatment of some sort to stop my cancer before it turned into a tumor that needed treatment, I would have got back the first six months of my daughter's life. And the fact that it's BC donors who are making it this happen, making this a reality for so many women, is incredible to me.